Now, John Howes is a writer, actor, director. He's a nominated BAFTA Breakthrough Brits for 2014. He is putting together a documentary called Ticker Bomb and is on the line right now. Afternoon, John. Afternoon, Tim. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, no, thanks for letting me come on the show. It's great. Now, this is uh, re really interesting because it affects so many people. Absolutely. And, of course, it's about Ticker Bomb, about having heart attacks and experiences with it. And you've got a particular interest in making the film because you've suffered to yourself. I have, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the truth of it is, Tim, what, what led me to this was it's kind of me trying to, to give something back a little bit, to be honest, because which all sounds very grand, but I had a, a kind of massive life-changing set of events in, in 2012. Um, and I, I mean, if, if I was, you know, applying for the job of having a heart attack, I was overqualified. <laughs> I was smoking, overweight, bad diet, stressy job, no exercise, all of it. But, but the big thing was, for me at least, I felt I was kind of invincible. You know, I don't know if you go on, you just think, oh, it'll never happen to me. And it, um, it took the wind right out of myself, and I nearly died. So, you know, thanks to the, the good old NHS, I was um, saved by the incredible people at, at Norfolk and Norwich. And I always kind of thought, well, when I've got, ch you know, chance and a bit of time to do it, and or, or you know, opportunities to get started on it, I'd, I'd make a documentary exploring all that. So that's what begins now. So you, your first one was a, the major heart attack, and you changed your lifestyle, but then suffered a second one. Yeah, that's right. Well, it was the truth of it was that the first one was was a kind of small to medium event, and then the big one was what did it. So after the big one, I, I kind of changed. I wasn't really. It all kind of happened within within a day of each other, really. So it was. Uh, it kind of all went a bit strange instantly. So it wasn't a long kind of period between them or anything like that. It was all pretty much bang, and then very big bang, you know. So so it uh, it was a real wake up call, yeah. So, I mean, since then, you've, heard, you've spoken to lots of other people who've had heart attacks and, and, and similar problems. What kind of uh, age are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm, I'm 44. Right. I'm 44. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I was young to have it, but then the more I, I find out, people have them horrendously young. And, and the thing is, it really is um, something that strikes without, obviously, you know, nobody plans for it, nobody prepares for it, and we all kind of go on and one of the things that interested me was to be to be honest with you Tim I kind of knew that I wasn't doing the right things you know I knew I shouldn't be having this kebab or I knew mm. I should stop smoking but but you resist it and you just think well it won't be me or you think you know oh well you know my grand smoked till she was 90 and never had a problem or anything you know and 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 we have this this kind of thing about us that that in a way is a little bit selfish but particularly for the people we love where we just think oh I'll be fine it is thought I've, I've been into a and D e when I've broken various limbs and things, or Ouch. fallen off my bag by my bike or whatever. And I've been in A and E and go off to the emergency room. And it's quite often there are people like you described yourself, uh, tearful, promising their other halves that they didn't, that they'd, they'd have a new lifestyle, that they promised to be good and to eat healthily. And they go, what, why didn't you do it in the first place? And it's quite exactly. frustrating. Exactly, and and this is it. And I mean, you know, one of the things I'm going to be looking at in the documentary is that kind of stuff. And I mean, this. You know, there's, there's theories from the chemical to the psychological. You know, the, one of the things is, you know, we're, you know, we, we're going to be looking a little bit like super me at what's actually in our food and the food that we're kind of programmed to like by what we eat. But, but it's also the psychological, you know. And, and, and again, one of the things I've found so far in the research that's been brilliant, talking to the rehab teams at the NHS, is, um, is, that, is that there's a kind of constant evolution now in the way, in the patient experience. So, you know, for better or worse, there used to be a time when, you know, people would would turn up and say, oh, I'd, you know, I've, I'm being referred for a heart attack. And the doctor would go, OK, do you smoke? Yes, here, have a leaflet. Uh, do you, how do you eat? Oh, no, here, have a leaflet on better eating. Mm. You know, here, do you take any exercise? Have a leaflet on that. And, you know, people would walk out with, with an arm full of paperwork that they wouldn't read and carry on. But now what's the, the big change that we're looking at, or at least they're looking at, is this is a far more person-centred thing. So... You know, do you smoke? Yeah, well, do you think you might be able to cut down or do you think it's possible mm. to quit? What would be the obstacles? You know, so actually really getting involved with it. So how, how will your documentary uh, unfold? Are you going to have a series of talking to, to people who have had different experiences? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the aim is essentially the, the first part, the act one of the documentary is what is a heart attack? What do we know about it? You know, because I think it's one of the things I'm also interested in is what do we actually know? 
you know, do we know what a heart attack is? Do we know if we, if I was to say to you, what are the five worst things you can do to have for a heart attack? You know, that kind mm. of stuff. What are we actually aware of? And then looking at the experience and almost recreating what it's like from different people, you know. The second part is about rehab because the, the effects of a heart attack, is, um, at least I can only speak personally, obviously, but, but in the research as well, you know, it can be devastating psychologically as well as physically. The fear, you know, a lot of people, are not, again, for myself, I, I was afraid the moment I'd have a twinge in my chest after, so, oh, no, here we go again. Absolutely, and, yeah. And, and, and depression can follow, all sorts of things can follow that. And then the third part of the documentary is very much about what, how can we prevent this? What's the way forward? Um, I'm hoping, and things are looking quite positive there at the moment, to be working with the PPCI clinic at Norfolk and Norwich, where the team that actually saved my life. And also doing things like this particular open day that we're doing on Wednesday is just a kind of opening one. But we'll be hoping to do them in Norwich, Yarmouth, places locally as well. The, you know, the places that are located around the, the relevant hospitals like Paget and, Paget and Norfolk and Norwich. Two of my regular guests, so one regular guest contributor to this show, he, I think, is about similar age to yourself in sort of early 40s. Right. And he got a couple of chest pains recently on his bike. He's a drinker, he's a smoker, but he's, he's thin, there's not an ounce of fat on him. He's mm. fairly active, very happy, not stressed. Mm. And out of the blue, had a heart attack, started chip pains in the middle of his chest. And he didn't do much about it, didn't go to, thought I'd go to A&E, didn't go to A&E because couldn't face the cues. Mm. Went to the surgery, put him on the ECG. Now the ECG didn't show up anything. Wow. He, he had a blood test and then the doctor said, get to hospital now. No. And I had a stent put in because he'd, he'd had a heart attack. It's incredible, isn't it? And, and you know, I mean, the, 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 when, when I had the first of the two, I actually went to sleep. I slept it off. Ah. I thought, I'll, you know, I did the male thing, you know, I yeah. did, oh, well, hell, I'll be better in the morning, I'll just go to sleep. You know, and, and it was a miracle, and I nearly, at the start, before things started to get really out of hand, my, my initial plan before the big one was, oh, not again, oh, I'll just go to sleep, and I thought, no, you're in trouble here, son. You know, and, yeah. and, but it is this hidden thing, and what's, and what's been really interesting for me as well, talking to the guys in, in the medical profession, is it's quite a unique thing for them, in so far as they... The doctors, I mean, I was lucky enough to meet the doctor that saved my life. You know, I went back and met him, and that was, you know, that was, that was incredibly emotional, and he's an incredible bloke. Um, but, you know, these people meet you for a short period of time at one of the worst moments of your life. Sure. And then they very likely never see you again. The thing is, John, on the other side of the, the, the coin, mm. is that I, I do quite a bit of running, and there's been, just in the local community this year, I think two or three people have sadly died from running. Now, they're very, very thick right. people, and they go out running, of course. And they, well, one was on the round Norfolk relay, which is just like, look, they're not doing the whole 24 hours. It's a relay for 24 hours, but they came to the end of their, their, their bit, and they sadly collapsed and died. Oh, no. And there's been a couple of similar ones. Uh, the London Marathon, somebody died, I think, of some asthma related yep. uh, illnesses. So, I mean, could it be something predisposed, like you just born with that genetic fault. Well, well, it, well it's, it's definitely in the genes somewhere, because the, one of the first things that the doctors always try and track down is, do, does your family have a history of heart disease? Mm. You know, so, so that's, it, it can be congenital. But again, you know, it's, it's the thing is, it's an evolving science. And for me, what's fascinating about the, the documentary is trying to understand it. And, and, you know, and say, you know, what is the future? Is, you know, are we going to a point where, you know, there is something that really can stop this? But it seems that, you know, the, the things like the PPCI stuff with the, with the stents and all that can, can alleviate things tremendously. But it's, it's um, it really, I mean, that's why I called it the ticker bomb. I mean, mm, it's a good title. It, it, because it is something that, you know, it's, in, in a way, it's, it's, it is sit, just sitting there in the room, you know, and, and who knows when it's going to go off or how it's going to go off. And for me, it's been a, an incredible wake-up call. And, and what's... You know, what I'm interested in is, is obviously the stories of people who've had similar heart events, but also the people around them, you know, so the carers, the partners, the sons, the children, you know, the, sure, yeah. the daughters, yeah. you know, of people that have had it and how it changed their lives. So when, when, how long ago was your heart attack? 2012, July 14. Well, I, I named the production company for the documentary um, July 14 after the date it happened. So it was July 14th, 2012. Right, right in the middle of the Olympics. Just yeah, the yeah, Olympics. No, the whole lot, yeah. yeah. Well, it was... It was um, when I was kind of getting getting back on my feet. We did, there's a wonderful the, the ward in Norfolk and Norwich is this wonderful kind of octagon shape. So you kind of go on start going for walks around it, and we had 
our own little mini marathon thing <laughs> where the doctors would hand me glass and cups of water or something going around. You know? you're, you're right, John, with it being an evolving science, because one day you're told, drink coffee, don't drink coffee, take aspirin, don't take aspirin, mm. take statins, don't take statins. Now we are taking statins, so yeah. we, we, things, things change and evolve. That's it, absolutely. And, 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 you know, what we know now will be different in five years, you know, it will be different probably next year. Yeah. You know, but 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 what I what I'm incredibly keen on is capturing that kind of a the patient experience, but also the carer's experience, the doctor's experience, and and what the impact is for society. You know, we're a society that's getting bigger and larger and the beast. You know, each time, you know, the weight is is on the rise. I'm not a small chap. I'm nowhere near where I used to be, but I'm, I've still got some weight to get off. So, if people wanted to get in, involved, I imagine they might want to give you the information, but also keep the, the, the privacy at the same time of course no look, look we can we can do anything i mean the thing is what we're, we're doing is these series of open days um this is the uh, this is the only one before christmas we're, we're kind of launching at the seagull theater in lowestoft but you know we've got an email if people would like to share their story by email they're welcome to write in or do a phone interview they don't have to appear on camera um you know it's it's all fantastic material and what we're hoping to do is create an online archive of people you know even if it's just anonymous statements from people do you see what i mean so yeah people can go on and, and find support or comfort and go wow it wasn't just me you know it, it, you know that felt like that or or you know the fear or the depression or oh my god my life you know it's been the best thing that's happened to me it's not about just all the negative it's about you know this this life and death moment becomes a, a device for extraordinary change in some people so uh, if, if anyone wants to get um, in t touch with you john how would they do that. Right, well, the first one is, this, is I'll give you our email address, which um, which is, is live at the moment, which is kickerbomb okay. dot doc, D O C K, sorry, D O C, uh, sorry, so kickerbomb dot doc at gmail dot com, but there'll soon be a website. Um, if anyone's interested and would like to come along, we've got this open day in, in Lowestoft from 11 till 8 pm on Wednesday this week, the 10th. Um, People can contact contact us and kind of book a slot to be interviewed. Um, you know, they're about 20 minute slots. There's free tea and coffee. People can come and chill. And you know, eventually, what this will move toward will be, you know, um, information days and also opportunities for people to hopefully meet the doctors that saved them. Absolutely, yeah. that, that sounds a wonderful idea. I had a guest in the studio a couple of weeks back who had done. He had his heart wasn't a problem. I think he got pneumonia and it caused some heart attacks. So his heart was all right, but the plumbing was wrong. But then he decided to do five marathons this year. Incredible! So now he's got his medals tattooed too. Wow! But if people just Google yourself, John Hales, and Ticker Bomb, they'll come up. And now, so if they, the other thing they can do is contact me through my website, which okay. is mejohnhales.co.uk. So H A L E S. Yeah, that's right. Or if they'd like to leave a message and me to call them back, they can call the Seagull Theatre in Lowestoft. Seagull Theatre, right. But John, it's been fascinating. It, it, it's one of those things, isn't it, that it does make you, it makes me, as somebody in the 50s, uh, male, that, that with, with, I suppose, probably not the greatest of genes from the, down the line, right. start to worry about what's going to happen. You do, you do, and it's that feeling of mortality, Tim, I found, and actually going... You know, there's a wonderful line in Shakespeare, which is, um, you know, I wasted time and now time wastes me. Okay, fantastic. And, and so that's, that, that was my big wake-up call. So, so I'd love to hear from anyone. And again, you don't have to have had a heart event. You know, it could be that you lost someone. It could be that, you know, or you, you have and you changed your life or, or, um, or you know, you, or you're struggling to change your life. You couldn't stand the rehab program, not because of them, but you just found it hard to go and... There's an awful lot of shame with it as well. Uh, yeah, times. yeah, absolutely. But, it, but yeah, these days it doesn't mean to be the yeah, ending to be like a new beginning. John, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so thank much you. for joining us. Uh, I have got just one more question to ask you because sure. I was looking for the, our tunes, our system. I couldn't find Cardiac Arrest by Madness, which is a good tune. Right. I couldn't find Heartbeats by Buddy Holly, so I've got <laughs> uh, I've got Pain in My Heart by AD. I'm not familiar with that. So I've got This Old Heart of Mine by the Isley Brothers, or Raining in My Heart by Buddy Holly. To, which one of those would you like to hear? I, I, I'm almost, I was almost going to say, did you get, is it Sheer Heart Attack by Blondie? But let's not go with that. I, I think the Isley <laughs> Brothers, please. Let's have a bit of, of, of good old tunes. Oh, I'll look for that. That's one by Blondie. For, 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 and that thank you so much for joining us. Tim, thank you. And I'd, I'd love to keep you posted if it's cool. Please do. Cool. Please do. That would be good to, to catch up as you go through uh, with the documentary. Yeah.
that's uh, John Hales there, writer, actor, director, nominated BAFTA Breakthrough uh, in the Brits 2014. If you want to get involved with him, John Hales, go to his website uh, or via the Seagull Theatre.